Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to BC Kids. Welcome to Kids Church. This morning, we're going to be talking about how God is love. And so I have a special story for you from the big God story today. So if you guys could go run and grab your Bibles and open to John chapter 3. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to give you a little background for the story that I'm going to share today. So our story today is about a Pharisee named Nicodemus. And Pharisees, they were teachers of the law. So they spent their entire lives studying it. They knew God's word inside and out. And they were always on the lookout for the Messiah. But the Pharisees thought that the Messiah was going to come and save Israel, kind of like how we talked about a few weeks ago, like a mighty warrior king, that he was going to come in and he was going to defeat Israel the enemies of God. But that's not the way Jesus came in. Remember, boys and girls, he came in on a donkey, very peaceful. So it wasn't like they expected. So let's hop in to the big God story to John chapter 3. We're going to talk about Nicodemus, okay? And so it says there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform signs, the signs you are doing, if God were not with them. So Nicodemus had seen all the different things that Jesus had done. He had seen the different miracles, but he really, he had some questions, and he wanted to know some more about God. But the interesting thing was, he came to Jesus at night, kind of like he was sneaking around. So what I need you guys to do is give me your best sneak, get down real low, creep up, sneak up to the television screen, and pop up. Good job, boys and girls. So Nicodemus came at night to Jesus because he wanted his questions answered, and he wasn't really sure who Jesus was. So as we get into this scripture and we read further down, we see that Jesus says to him, Because he asked Jesus, he says in verse 4, he says, How can someone be born when they are old? Because Jesus, he wanted to know how they could get into the kingdom of God. And so Jesus told him he needed to be born again. And Nicodemus is like, I'm a man. I'm old. I don't know how to be born again. And Jesus explains to him, he says, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God Unless they are born of water and of the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying this. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot hear where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit, boys and girls. So the spirit is like wind. Okay? hear the wind, we see the effects of the wind, right? You guys saw my hair blowing in the wind. You saw the effects of it. But we can't tell where the wind started from or where it's going. That's the way it is when we're born of the Holy Spirit, when Jesus comes into our heart, when we ask him to forgive us of our sins. That's what he meant by being born of the Spirit, that the Spirit begins to work in us. And we're going to talk about this in a couple weeks, about how the Holy Spirit is evident in our lives. And that's through the fruit of the Spirit. And we'll get to that in a few weeks, but we'll hear about it. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But grab your Bibles. We're going to run back to the story of Nicodemus, okay? So in the story, Jesus not only says that we have to be born of the Spirit, but He wanted to correct Nicodemus and let him know what it meant to be the Savior because Jesus knew that he was coming to die. Jesus knew he was going to die on the cross for our sins. And so he tells Nicodemus about a time back in Israel. He goes, Nicodemus, do you remember way back when, when Moses and the people of Israel were wandering in the wilderness and the people complained and God sent snakes and the snakes started biting people and people were dying And God told Moses, make a bronze snake and raise it up. And anyone who has been bitten by the snake and looks at the bronze snake that you made, they will be healed. And so Jesus compared himself to that bronze snake. He says it right here in John 
uh, chapter 3, okay, he says in verse 13, he says that no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses, verse 14, lifted the snake up in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. So Jesus was foreshadowing, he was telling Nicodemus how he was going to die, that he was going to be lifted up so that all men could see, and that's how we are made right with God. That's how we're made right with God. And then, I know all of you know this verse super duper well, okay? John 3.16. Look at it in your big God story, but all of us know it pretty well, and it's going to be up on the screen, but it's, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And simply what that means is this, boys and girls, like I said, God is love. God loves us so much, so much, boys and girls, that he sent his son Jesus to die for us. And by Jesus talking with Nicodemus, it changed the course of his life. Though we're never told in scripture whether or not he really accepted Jesus as his, sa as his savior, it's interesting if you go through and read about at Jesus' trial how Nicodemus defended Jesus. And then even after that, he helped take Jesus' body down off the cross and bury him. So it really, his conversation with Jesus, it impacted him. It changed everything for Nicodemus. And our relationship with Jesus can change everything for you. God made a way because he loved us so much. I talked about this last week, that he built a bridge, and that bridge was Jesus, for us to come and to know him as our Lord and Savior. And so here's what we're going to do, boys and girls. We're going to sing a song because we always sing a song. I love worshiping together with you. So we're going to sing a song. So I want everyone to stand up on their feet and lift their hands and praise God because we're going to sing. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you what we can do to ask Jesus to come into our heart.
All right, boys and girls, so here's what we're going to do right now, okay? We sang a song, and it was great, lifting Jesus up. He is our hero, and it's the greatest adventure we can go on is following Jesus. That's what our song was about. So what I want you guys to do right now, boys and girls, is... After this video is over, we're gonna, I'm going to pray, but after this video is over, I have a prayer walk activity for you guys. I sent an email out to your parents on Saturday, which was yesterday, and in that email, it had a couple different things about different ways that you can pray, different prayer stations that they can set up around the house for you guys to walk to and to pray about, okay? So you're going to... You're going to take a few moments, and you're going to do a prayer walk. Now, you're probably like, Pastor Danielle, what is a prayer walk? Simply what it is, is you're going to walk around your home, and as you walk, you're going to have a conversation with God, okay? You're going to pray for your family. You're going to pray for your friends. If you're in your bedroom, you can pray for, um, if you share your bedroom, you can pray for your siblings that are in that bedroom. If you don't, if you have your own room, you can pray that God gives you peaceful dreams and rest and helps you. Um, in the living room, you can pray for your family, your moms and dads, asking God to just be with you guys as a family and build you up, but you're going to walk around your house and you're going to pray in each of the different rooms, something about a family member or a friend, and then your parents have the specific instructions for the three different stations that we have available to you, okay? So I'm going to close in prayer, and what I want to do is give you an opportunity to make Jesus your forever friend. You guys have all heard my story, and I'll give it to you real quick. I got saved in my own home. It was really cool because it, it was right in my living room. Remember I told you guys about how the Vacation Bible School, they came and they did it on my front lawn, but that day it rained, and so instead of canceling, my mom invited them into our house, and they shared the story of what Jesus did for us, and they told that scripture verse, John three sixteen, for God so loved the world, and when they did that, I raised my hand and I gave my heart to Jesus and I got to pray right in my living room and ask Jesus to be my forever friend. So boys and girls, you kind of get that same opportunity. If you haven't asked Jesus to be your forever friend, what better time to do it than right where you're at, in your home. And then you can run out and you can tell your parents all about it. Okay, so we're going to pray right now. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus... I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I thank you that you loved us so much that you were willing to be sacrificed. And I pray that you would come and be in my heart, forgive me of my sins, and be my forever friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome job, boys and girls. So what you're going to do right now is head out, tell your parents if you prayed that prayer for the first time, and if you are already a Christian, that's awesome. But head out, go see your parents, and tell them you want to do the prayer walk and prayer stations. And they'll know exactly what you're talking about, and they'll help you with it. We'll see you on Zoom groups on Thursday, boys and girls. Bye.